Hey, welcome back to making our login screen for our app 2019. Last time we made these OAuth buttons and today we're going to replace this email label with something that works and looks like this. Okay, and we're going to be making it with a group. So let's put that in here. Let's give it a Y of zero. Let's give it a width of 240. And let's give it a height of that, that could stay we'll just shrink it as we need to next we're going to put in uh an email thing we're going to line it up with the left of the oauth buttons i believe it is oh, or no the email thing email text uh will actually sit a little bit to the right so we're not going to adjust its x value just yet we're going to follow our font naming con our font conventions and we're going to make it i think 20 um in size we're going to make sure that it's 66 not 33 and we're going to line it left in the responsive tab we're going to make sure that it always sits on left and in the ui builder we're going to leave it just like that next we're going to grab an input input where are you down here let's go ahead and put that in there make it roughly the same width uh, minus we need a little bit of space over here for our um, danger button we're going to make sure that we remove this style. We say content format is actually an email. Uh, moving down now, we have our font. Uh, again, the same font. We're going to make it a size of 16 or 18. I'm not sure yet. Um, let's give it a font color of 66 as well. Let's remove the placeholder and let's uh, remove the background style. Let's change this to zero. Let's go none. And let's go define each border independently. I don't know why this happens. Bubble, you need to. When I say zero and none, you need to change them all to zero and none when I click define each border independently. Uh, bottom right, no roundness, solid uh, with one and a color of, that's fine. Okay, now we're going to move this up here. Uh, we're going to align it to the same as the OAuth buttons, which is Y of, which is an X of six inside of its group. So we're going to do the exact same thing. If this is 240 and centered horizontally, it should actually line up. So let's grab our input. Where is it? That's text. Where's my input? There it is. And let's give it the y, the x value of 6 as well. Let's leave this little space right here for um, our danger button. And let's drag this back in. Right now our width is 208. I like round numbers, so let's go with 220. No, that's too big. So we're going to have to go with 210. And we're going to leave a little bit of a margin, 24. That's not quite enough, so let's go with 200. Okay. so. Okay, so now what we want is when we click on the input, uh, this email thing goes and hides up at the top left of the input itself. So we're gonna go conditional when uh, input is focused or input, uh, also if the input has a value in it, so input value is not empty, then we want the font size to be 10. Um, and we also want the font color to be a little bit more facing so that people focus on the actual uh, input itself and we can add transition for both of those uh, 200 is fine i use 250 you can use 250 if you want and font color same thing okay so now we have those let's preview it and basically what it does is it'll put your email it'll put your input and when you click on it this will go up here so a few things that we forgot to do let's click on the input in the conditional remove these uh, let's let's remove the fact that it has a max width when it's stretched just so that the email stays and then we'll make it pixel perfect afterwards but the next thing that we need to do is grab this height of 30 and this y of 8 so 38 we'll grab a shape we'll put the shape in right here we'll make it the same width which was 200 and yeah just 200 and we'll give it a x value that's the same i think it was six as the input, a height of 1 and a y of 40. Was it 46 that we said, or 42 or 40? Oh, I can't remember. So the height is 30 plus 8, so 38. Uh, let's grab that shape again. Very difficult to select the shape. Um, 38, perfect. And we're going to make sure that that uh, aligns to the left as well all the time. Let's try to select that shape. Say align left. So now those should all move together. And we should have our input with the email. When I click on it, the email faces to the top. Perfect, except that I need to remove two pixels off the um, email text, off the X of the email. Where is it? X, we're going to go to nine, and that should align perfectly. All right, and last but not least, the shape. 
I don't want actually sitting on top here. I want it to um, basically <clears throat> appear. So we're going to go shape. Can we just grab it from the elements tree instead of trying to click on it all the time? Shape A. Uh, we're going to say visible on page load, yes. And um, when input isn't focused, then we're going to say it's not visible. So basically, it's visible on page load, then it disappears until the element is focused again. And that's great. Okay, let's go ahead and this is text email. We could shrink this. It doesn't need to be here. Um, and we can close the group around it. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add a group that encompasses everything that just sits over top of everything. And the reason why is because we're going to make that shape appear when this group um, is clicked. So we're going to say when input is focused, then this element is not visible, but it is visible on page load. We're going to give it no background style, and now we're going to give it a workflow. And it's going to say element actions. Um, set focus to input, which will automatically make this very group disappear. And we're also going to animate the shape A that we built out to expand in, expand in. And then we can define a custom duration because this is a little bit long. We want 350 or 200 or whatever it is that you uh, want. You can play around with it. Here it is. The group is on top. So you can see my, my uh, cursor changed, my mouse icon changed to a finger because I can click on it. And then when I do click on it, uh, the shape expands in. It's too bad that the shape is currently the same color, so you can't really see it, but if we make this blue as we were supposed to, then it'll actually work out. There it is, it expanded in and it's wonderful. Okay, next, just to tweak things a little bit more and spend a little bit too much time uh, on this, we can grab the input and we can say conditional when this input is focused, is focused. Uh, then border style bottom is none. So it'll remove the, the gray that you currently see here that makes it look a little bit ugly. And finally, uh, I do have Ionic icons in my plugins. If you don't have it, install it. And let's go to design and let's grab an Ionic icon. Where is it? They're up here. Okay, and let's put that in here. And we're going to make it a width of, I think, 12 or something. Yeah. 16 is good, and let's make it a little bit taller, like uh, 20. Let's center it to our input, so we have to sort of do it by hand. Um, I would do it pixel perfect if this wasn't a tutorial, but I'll just drag it down like this and say icon. The first one on the top is like this, and then we're going to pick a red, which I would put more uh, work into selecting and make sure that it's the same red as the invalid, but we'll go input. Um, if the input isn't valid, then we're going to make this element visible, true, and we're going to make it invisible on page load. And now you should have your whole thing just built out wonderfully. Here it is. It aligns. It's pixel perfect. Uh, I think the shape is a little bit long on the left side, but I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Let's put in an invalid email address, and here's my little thing that shows up. And let's put in a valid email address. And now it doesn't show up anymore, and it's wonderful. Um, you could make it sit higher. Uh, over here, what I did is I actually, when the text is just sitting there, there's a space here that's a very small font. And that's why it actually uh, gives it enough room like that. So you can work with that. You could tweak it. Uh, it just depends on the font that you'll be using, but this generally works for me. Uh, let's make this a little bit lighter as well, I think. Yeah, because it's really dark right now. Uh, if you make it a little bit lighter, let's select text email, conditional. Let's make it a little bit lighter to the point where it's almost not there anymore and it won't actually be a problem. There it is. So you can just barely see it. And uh, it does get covered by this. I've, I haven't figured out how to actually remove those red borders uh, from the entire thing. It just seems to inherit this condition from back when it was uh, invalid. You, what you could say is when uh, input... Yeah, just had this idea. Let's see. When input isn't valid, then uh, border style top is none. Let's see if that works. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work, but uh, also you could change the shape A to say when input isn't valid, then uh, background color can be that red that we had selected earlier. Uh, I don't know what it was. I would copy paste it over if I had the time, but I want to keep this tutorial a little bit shorter. 
Let's go ahead and try that. Oops, something happened. Here it is. Okay, stop, please. Yeah, it's not. For some reason, I, I just haven't figured out how to get rid of it. If I do, or if you know how to, put it in the comments. Uh, but this is fine, just like this. And then when you actually add an email that works, then it'll be valid again. Sweet. Next, we're going to copy paste this down to password and do the whole password thing, which will look a lot like this. So we'll see there. 